I am Komla and we are grateful you could join us. Now, the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Kudeo, has fended off attacks on it by the Electoral Commission following its assessment of Yayawasu West Wogon by election at a press conference uh, last week. Chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Madame Jean Mensah, took a swipe at Kudeo for suggesting that the election was marred by violence. Listen to her. The Commission recognizes the important role of local election observers in ensuring fairness and accountability in the electoral process. The Commission would have expected Kodeo to have given the overall picture of the conduct of the polls, i.e. the credibility of the voters register. The Commission would have also expected them to provide some information on the voting process of the day, the conduct of the electoral officials as well as the counting and declaration of results, among others. The Commission has taken note of the contents of Kodeo's report and responds as follows. On the allegation of a shooting incident at the La Bawaleshi area, the Commission rejects the attempts by the report of Kodeo to link the Electoral Commission to the alleged incident at the private residence of the parliamentary candidate of the National Democratic Congress. In this respect, the Commission strongly disassociates itself from the alleged acts of violence that occurred at the La Baweleshi area. It is important to stress that none of the EC's security officers in any of the 137 polling stations across the constituency were armed giving voters the free will to exercise their right to vote. The commission wishes to state that the alleged attack on a police officer by national security and personnel, as stated in the Kodeo report, is untrue. The commission's check with these election officials, that is the presiding officers at the polling stations, as well as the district electoral officer in charge of the Ayawaso West Wogon constituency proves contrary to Kodeo's assertion. Chairperson of Electoral Commission Jean Mensah there, well, Kodeo has since responded to the EC in a statement maintaining its stance on the assessment of a by-election. In the last few minutes, uh, officials of Kodeo have been meeting pressmen and maintaining that there were some skirmishes at some polling stations and the disruptions that marked the by-elections, as they stated earlier. We can listen to some of the questions and answers uh, that are being given at this particular event. Of Kodeo, um, I think in the midst of all these discussions, one thing that has come up clearly is the issue of party tax or vigilante groups. And this is an area that Kodeo has really, really done a lot uh, over the past few years. And after the 2016 election, Kodeo convened a stakeholder workshop uh, in Aga. We had all manner of stakeholders, uh, political parties, all the major parties were there. We had the Electoral Commission also uh, represented the security agencies were there. And then at the end of it, uh, one critical issue that came up was that the problem with vigilantism is something that needed serious attention. Now after that um, workshop and the communicator that came out, could you further went on to pursue a number of things. We went around the entire nation trying to get a sense of what really we had at hand in terms of uh, the problem or the menace of political party vigilantism. We had a, um, some good data on the phenomenon and the, the, the critical problems it poses for uh, electoral processes. Beyond that, uh, we've been trying to engage with national level actors. Um, we've already appointed the national security minister um, about a year ago or so. Uh, on how really we can deal with this problem and it's something that we continue to engage and um, I'm sure we would be involved with the Electoral Commission and other stakeholders as well. So specifically that's what we've been doing and we'll continue to pursue that agenda. Okay. Yes, but the media should also be involved. They should know that what they report is important.
So watching Joy News today here on the Joy News channel and some news that is just coming in. Uh, the NPP Member of Parliament for the Ayawaso West Wogon constituency has donated an amount of 5,000 CDs to offset the bills of those victims who were injured in last Thursday's violence at La Bawaleshi here in Accra. Madame Sarah Malassan, who was at the Head 7 Military Hospital to visit the victim says the incident was unfortunate. We are working the telephone lines and my colleague Chrissy Parker Wilson is there for us live. Chrissy, uh, thank you for joining us. What more do we know about the visit of Madame Sarah Malhassan to the 37 hospital? Hello, Parker. Hello. Yes, so what more do we know about Madame Alhassan's visit to the 37 military hospital beyond oh, what? helping well, yes, yes, assess Pabla, the bills? So this is afternoon that uh, she visited the uh, victims of last Thursday shooting incident, and she paid 5,000 Ghana cities to offset the bills of the victims. Now, just a while ago, she indicated that the posture by the minority in parliament uh, was not unfortunate. And she believes that members of parliament are advocating for women to be in parliament. And she just, uh, she, she was elected, I mean, a while ago, I mean, some days ago, and that for them to give her her support, they rather want to stage or boycott the, the whole exercise. She believes it is not the best. And that uh, she says she has actually forgiven all those who did that and praying that going forward to be able to weld I mean, there are different terms. Mm, and Parker, have you seen the victim who is on admission at the hospital and how is he doing? Yes, uh, Pamela, we, 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 we've seen the victim who is on admission. I mean, we are told by the doctors that uh, he is responding to treatment. Now, let me say that before the research, we were told that uh, they've not settled his, his bills yet. And that is why the number of parliament for Iowa, so West Wogan uh, this afternoon decided to uh, pay 5,000 Ghana cities to offset the bill. Mm, many thanks to you, my colleague, Kwesi Paka Wilson, bringing us live updates from the 37 military hospital there. But let's still stay on this subject because the minority in parliament, in what appears to be a justification of Tuesday's walkout during the swearing-in of the Ayawasu West Wogan MP-elect, say they do not regret brandishing the placards in parliament during their protests. The minority MPs wielded placards with the inscription, Bloody Widow, before walking out and proceeding to the police headquarters. Now, sections of the public have condemned the action of the minority, describing it as insensitive and needless. But speaking on the AM show with Mama Vyoguswa Bwaji, the minority spokesperson on legal and constitutional affairs, Alhaji Nusa Fuseni, justified the tag they put on the MP-elect. The invisible forces and the uh, uh, data forces, who created them? It's the president who created them. When they were in opposition, these were the boys, they went and brought the Serbians and the South African mercenaries to train. And there are the people they have taken for further training at Isidwari and brought them. Mr. Brian Champon has laid the cards on the table. He said that he sent the boys there. We apologize for that wrong soundbite there. We will bring you that soundbite as and when we have it. Now, meanwhile, the Majority Women Caucus is calling for an unqualified apology from the minority. Here is Deputy Majority Leader Sarah Adwasafo. The Women Caucus in Parliament express utmost revulsion and disgust to the shameful stance staged by the minority yesterday. Indeed, we are converging the, con the sentiments and anger of our constituents across the country. We state that their action is a vicious attack on the stren strenuous efforts made over the years as a people to attain gender parity and empower women. The Constitution of the Republic of Ghana frowns on the discrimination against women, and in Article 12, Clause 2 of the 1992 Constitution. Every person in Ghana, whatever his race, place of origin, political opinion, color, religion, creed, and our, uh, the emphasis here is ours, or gender, or gender, shall be entitled to the fundamental human rights and freedoms of the individual contained in Chapter 5 are subject to the respective rights and freedom of others and for the public interest. That is Article 
12.2 of the Constitution. We, the women of the majority caucus, are grossly disappointed in the attitude and language of the minority members against Honorable Lydia Seriam Al Hassan on the various placards displayed in the chamber yesterday. We hereby condemn in no uncertain terms the act of the minority, a rather disrespectful and inhumane treatment, and an attack on the dignity and integrity of womanhood. This is brutal and unparliamentary. Order 93.2 of our standing order states, it shall be out of order to use offensive, abusive, insulting, blasphemous, or unbecoming words, or to impute improper motive to any member or to make personal allusions. We are absolutely concerned, convinced, that the language on the placards was grossly unparliamentary, frivolous, barbaric, and unconstitutional. So you hear the Deputy Majority Leader in Parliament, Sarah Adjoa We can now return to our earlier soundbite of the Minority Spokesperson on the Constitution and Legal Affairs Committee of Parliament, Inu Safuseni, who justified the brandishing of those placards earlier on the AM show with Mamafi Ousu Abwaje. The presence of the policemen were directly connected with the by-elections in the area, in the constituency. Indeed, the disturbances and violence visited on unsuspecting civilians by these masked marauding beasts prowling the polling stations were tangential to the elections. And why do you think that we should separate them? And that's why you don't recognize the That's candidates. why we will not dignify the swearing-in process of a product of a bloody process with our presence. Why do you call her bloody widow? Because she's a product of a... She's a direct beneficiary of the violence in the U.S. and the U.S. You don't think that's heartless, distasteful, as some persons have described it? It's, it's what, what is heartless about it? Things words take their color from their surroundings. We went into a by-election. We experienced violence that has never been experienced before. We saw impunity of levels that we have never witnessed in this country. Why do you tag her with that? She, she, because she, she, didn't, the control, she didn't control the, the security forces and who on do that you want day. To, who do you want us to tag? Well, there's Brian Echampo who's owned up. Well, Brian Echampo is not contesting elections. <laughs> we, we have identified our victim. You take your victim as you find him. We've identified our victim and our victim is, uh, is, uh, is Lydia Lassen. And she's a direct beneficiary of the process. And now we're going for her. And we, are, we aren't stopping. Still on this particular subject, the Dean of the School of Information and Communication Studies at the University of Ghana, Professor Audrey Gajekbo, has described the minority's reference to Lydia Sarah Malhassan as bloody widow as completely out of line. Speaking on the Super Morning Show Wednesday, Professor Audrey Gajekbo described the action by the minority as an inhospitable political culture. There's no question in my mind that the minority was out of line or anybody who will target a bloody widow, whether in parliament or out of parliament, is completely out of line. Because the reasons why they did that are not, she's incidental to those reasons. In other words, there was a by-election, it was violent. The, I think majority of people in Ghana condemned the violence. Um, and have forewarned that we are moving towards a country where violence is marring our elections. Having said that, the fact that she won those, uh, the constituency doesn't, it, it is not tied to the violence in one spot. The violence, as far as I know, was confined to a particular location. But she won in many other locations. So it's quite clear that she won on her own steam. Secondly, I doubt that, you know, if it had been a male person, they would, they would behave in this manner. Why the tag widow? She, of course, is the widow of the person who held the seat before. This would not be the first time. In fact, this is the third time in our nation's history that widows have assumed the seat of um, their husbands 
by running and competing with other people. This is a parliament that has so few women already. Why? Because our political system is so patronage-based, is so configured that it does not allow for women to compete. And so this just reinforces the kind of political culture we have that is inhospitable to women. We can stay on this subject a while longer because the minority in parliament is demanding the dismissal of Minister of State in charge of national security and the Inspector General of Police. Minority MPs walked out of parliament Tuesday and marched to the police headquarters to petition the Inspector General of Police over violence that characterized the Ayawasu West Wogan by election. 16 people were injured. Minority spokesperson on communications, ABA Fuseni, says the two should be removed to make way for credible investigations into the violence. The invisible forces and the uh, uh, data forces, who created them? It's the president who created them. When they were in opposition, these were the boys, they went and brought the Serbians and the South African mercenaries to train. And they are the people they have taken for further training at Isidwari and brought them. Mr. Brian Champon has laid the cards on the table. He said that he sent the boys there. Who is the chairman of the National Security Council? It's the president. So if he says that they, they sent them there, by, 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 by logic, who sent them there? So, you think the so president is we think that, look, if the president in, in does not know, he should simply call Mr. Brian Champon and say that you have made a public admission, that you sent the boys there. Go and bring the boys. Very simple. Should Brian Champon look, the MPP is sitting on the, the government is sitting on the truth and looking for it. They know. These boys were there. Look, the police were standing by when these hoodlums were ra raining riots and doing what they were doing. It was clear. So who says that they can't identify that they don't know them? When a minister of state has said, I sent them there. So just ask him to bring the boys yeah. in a civilized society. If we're in a civilized society and in a serious democracy, Mr. Brian Champon, the IGP order, they should not be in office. They should have been all subject matter of investigations. And, yeah, and, but the, and that is what I'm saying. That is why that is why we're finding it very difficult because the, the, nothing would happen because it, they are the president's boys. Well, Deputy Majority Whip in Parliament, Matthew Nindam, is however questioning the sudden confidence of MP for Ningo Pram Pram, Sam George in the police after he first ran them down over their credibility in investigating the matter. He spoke on PM Express last night and he encouraged politicizing the work of the police, or he discouraged actually politicizing the work of the police. We will not also sit down and allow NDC to try <coughs> to take some political capital out of this because we think that issues like this should be given a national attention. And if we want to look at it from that perspective, we need to bond together. Their march to the police today is giving some kind of action. Yes, I want to agree on that note. You know why? When we are in opposition, it is easy to bastardize and insult and denigrate and run down state institutions. It's very easy, okay? If Sam George admits on radio, your sister station, mm -hmm. he doesn't trust the police. He will not make any case. He doesn't trust the Ghana police. The same Sam George today with his colleagues marched to the headquarters, now trusting the police. Hmm? Now trusting the police that the police can do some kind of work for them. Obviously, the police will do it. But if you run that, that state institution and you don't go to report because you don't trust them, what do you want them to do? But if the person beats you up, how can you report? <laughs> today, so, so, so today, they marched to the police with Sam George. And he said the police never treated Sam George fairly because considerably they've not given him the opportunity to even write his statements. Mm. He mentioned that. Yeah. The same group of persons you don't trust. They're the same, people, the same group of people you now want justice from. You now want assistance from. And I'm telling you that such comments do not bold nations. You know, a member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, Sam George, is expected to present his statement to the police today. He told parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opoku Gakpo he has furnished the police with some names and relevant information on persons who assaulted him at the home of the NDC candidate Delali Brimpong during the Ayawasu West Walk on election. We engaged with the police and uh, we will be continuing to support the police in the investigation. Hopefully we see some concrete action taken very soon. Failure of which next week, Tuesday, we'll be back here. Okay, so you gave a statement, they interrogated you just to get a sense what exactly happened in that meeting. 
we are working and collaborating with the police in the investigation. On Saturday, I went to the Legon police station. They refused to take my statement. That has been resolved. The police has apologized for that, and it's been resolved today. All the necessary processes are in motion. And so, for me, I want to give as much support as possible to the Ghana Police Service. However, when it comes to picking up their perpetrators, that's up to the police service. I still want to give them the benefit of the doubt. And like I said, we'll keep watching this space. We are cooperating with the police. Just to be sure, that's far, are you satisfied with how the police have responded, at least on your visit today? Uh, you know, following the invitation they extended to you, are, are, are you cool with how things have unfolded that way? We're cooperating with the police. We can move away from Ayawaso and the related issues and do some other stories because Chief Executive Officer of Maslock, Stephen Amor, has justified why government paid $13 million being cost of some 350 vehicles purchased under the Eswa Mahama administration at an inflated cost. Speaking to on Joy SMS Tuesday, the chairman of the National Development Planning Commission, Professor Stephen Adai, questioned why the current government paid the full cost of a deal when it knew too well the cost was inflated. Listen. There's no doubt at all that there is something not right with this contract. And uh, we hope that it will be unraveled. And those who have caused financial loss, if there is any to the state, will be made to pay for it. The state cannot just dispense with these monies and uh, have it discounted. No, somebody must be held accountable. Uh, what would be the best course of action for you? Well, I don't think that uh, anybody, not me, anybody will do this in their own private company. And at this moment, I think that the least that can be done is for the Ministry of Finance to revoke the conditional uh, tax waiver because it was not approved by Parliament, ask Mark to pay it. But I will still want somebody to pursue the fact why it was 20000 per bus extra. Somebody knowingly caused financial loss to the country. And I think that somebody must be held accountable. But I'm quite surprised because uh, I'm not a lawyer, but if a contract is clearly, as it appears, tainted with corruption, with about uh, the price about 20,000 inflated per bus. Yes, I'm quite surprised that it's being paid at its face value and the negotiation didn't make any difference. That's quite so surprising. It sounds to me too fishy. And it's not only part being fishy in the past, but too fishy now. <laughs> but speaking to Joy News and Reaction, Mr. Amwa explained the decision to pay the car company was because the Attorney General advised them to do so. If anybody had interest in terms of monetary or financial, why would you go ahead and even allow the issue to go to court? Two, we're not so stupid. Does the professor mean that if a company, two companies signs a contract, one to purchase number of items from the other, agreed on a figure and signed, and then the management of the company that is supposed to purchase those items hand over the company to another management, and the contract is binding, the new management is not supposed to pay. Is that, what the, is that what my professor is telling me as a young man? Please. I don't think it's everybody that is in politics that is interested in corruption. And it's unfair to say that a government that is claiming to protect government purse. It's very unfortunate. There was me, I'm not a legal practitioner. But this is the note from Attorney General's outfit that the contract was valid and that we should go ahead and pay. It's here. Read it. Maslock entered into a valid contract with the two companies involved. The companies have delivered the vehicles, and Maslock has taken possession of same. Maslock has failed and stroke or refused to make payments to the companies involved in accordance with the provisions of the contract signed. 
taking custody of the cars was done by the NDC regime, my predecessor. Signing the contract that is binding us today as a government to avoid any so-called judgment debt. That the same people would think we plan to do judgment debt and there was something fishy. Was done by the NDC government, not us. So what are they talking about? There are genuine people in this country that want to help sacrifice everything they have for Ghana. And none of these people are praised. It's not everybody that is in politics that is corrupt. I'm not saying I'm perfect. But the fact of the matter is that the NDC, that under their regime, they have increased one bus by about $30,000. This huge amount is not an issue to be given the profound attention that we need as a people. Rather, somebody that a contract is binding his government or organization. That they could get. To some other stories, the Jaboso District Hospital now has an ambulance after years of operation. The facility says the inadequate number of ambulances at the national level made it impossible for the hospital to get one. The Member of Parliament for Jaboso in the Western Region, Kwabna Minta Akando, handing over keys of a new ambulance, urged management of the Jaboso District Hospital to make good use of the facility. There's more in this report. The Jabusu District Hospital has been operating years without an ambulance in case of referrals. Speaking at the handing over ceremony, MP for Jabusu, Kwabena Minta Akando, said he promised to buy an ambulance for the facility after a staff debut last year when they made the request. He noted that the procurement process delayed because of some specifications he wanted in the ambulance and to ensure durability. And they indicated that I mean, since the inception of the hospital, they've not had ambulance before. So they have challenges in transferring patients to other referral centers. So well, as huge as the challenge was, we pray to God. And by God's grace and assistance of the medical doctor and some technical people, today we have the ambulance. Uh, another challenge that is usually associated with such projects is about the maintenance. We've had discussions with them, and we are going to have about five member committee to oversee the affairs of the ambulance. First and foremost, um, the objective is that the ambulance is almost all the time in good condition. If we have other revenue, we will still invest it in the hospital. We are not going to take that money from the hospital. We will invest it in the, in the health sector. The hospital has meanwhile promised to ensure regular maintenance of the ambulance. Since this uh, hospital came into being, we've never had an ambulance and any time we are to refer a case to Kumasi or anywhere, it becomes a problem for us. From today, I believe that problem is going to be solved. So we thank him very much and we thank everybody who has made this ambulance possible for us. We promise that we will put it in the good use maintain it so that it will serve the people for a very long time. In a related development, Kwabuna Minta Kando has also provided sewing machines for some youth in his constituency and paid for the apprenticeship. The MP says he intends to undertake other projects in the constituency. You're still watching Joy News today. Coming up shortly in business, a standoff between new ECG owners and the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission over determination of new tariff levels deepens. Stay with us for details with Darrell Kwao shortly. <laughs>